Goes my mind on and on and on, noisy as anything, and I hear chitter chatter, chitter chatter, chitter chatter all around me, too. It's all very loud the sound of a clock ticking that I don't actually think is up here in the tower with us. The sounds of birds I cannot see outside the hole in the bricks that serves as a window to this place. Drip, 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 drip of a leak somewhere that's probably contributing to these weeds and vines growing through the stones. Why is it so noisy in here? I came back here for peace and quiet, didn't I? Of course I know the answer, my love. Of course I know the answer. Take a deep breath in. And out. I'm so lost. I'm lost without an enemy, without a threat, without a quest, without a path, without a battle. But I don't want those things either. I just want, I want, I want, oh, forget it. Look. Look, my love, I have an idea. The sun is setting. Let's go to the balcony. The rocks have crumbled and fallen in such a way as to make a couple of fairly nice seats here. Stone thrones, if you will. They look a little different than I think you pictured them being all those years ago beloved. Do you remember that? Oh, don't frown. Don't weep, my beloved. It's all right. It's a nightmare of a past self that cannot hurt you anymore. You are not that soul anymore. You are not some greedy, monstrous thing anymore. You are a lovely, monstrous thing now. <laughs> and so am I. Just enjoy the sunset. Remember that the memory cannot hurt you, as I recall it for you. It was a vision of a world full of death. Empty, empty, empty. Only ghosts. And you, and I. You wanted to reign with me. You were the god of death. A beautiful and vicious thing. Oh, you broke my heart. Your throne was huge and shining and black, I think. Is my memory correct? Stark and sharp and awful. And mine was smaller, but carved with roses upon roses upon roses. Roses carved in stone. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but... I know you know how I love roses. I don't know if you wanted everything dead and decaying, but I think you thought you had no choice. 
No choice but to have only you and I. Forever and ever and ever. In a world with no growth, no green, no birth, no flowers, no life. Only you and I and death. I was so scared then. I realized what you wanted, what you thought we must have. And it terrified me, and I ran, and I fought you, and I freed myself, and I erased you. And then I changed into something that was all growth, all green, all flowers, all life. Birth. Rebirth. And now I see how death is a part of that, too, and you don't frighten me anymore. Well, not as much. A dance. Again, I say it's just a dance. But we must learn the steps. You needn't be afraid as you learn the steps. Just listen to the music and it will guide you. The sky is gray and pink, my sweet. The full moon will be rising soon. I think this full moon wants to take care of our hearts, wants to dig up our pain and play with it a little, shake the dirt off, then release it, if we let it. I would like to let it. You are so sleepy, my love. Rest your eyes. Close the lids of those blue eyes. Or are they black? Or are they gone? I can't ever recall quite correctly anymore. Isn't that funny? Close them. Close them. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. I find I cannot quiet my mind, but I think it will help instead to use those voices. Use that noise. Use the music rumbling around in there. To tell just a little story. A little what if. What if we were king and queen of a world filled only with ghosts? What if you desired then had come to fruition? You traveling the world, moving around far and wide in your glorious black cloak and your bare, pale white feet every step rotting the grass and killing the flowers and massacring the ants, birds over you falling to the ground with a death cry, animals seeing you and trying to run, but only making it a single step before collapsing. It's a terrible, brutal thought. But this was your work once, and so we shall remember it as such. Angel of death, god of darkness, beastly thing, sad and lonesome thing, running, or rather walking, rampant, through a world that was all yours. And I, and I stayed home, sitting on a throne, waiting for you to return, running my fingers gracefully over the carved roses, a reminder of your love, as I hum a tune to myself. Just 
just a little something, just a sweet little nothing, that I made to sing to an imaginary child that, of course, there couldn't be in this particular vision. Because, as you were, no spark of life could come from a god of death and his concubine, his consort. I would say queen, but I did not dare call myself the queen of death. For I sat at home on a throne, designed to look like growing flowers, but truly just as much stone as yours. I sat there, and I did not dare walk about, for I did not want to kill anything. So I would sit, and I would sing to myself, and to the moon instead. And if I was lucky, a deer might run by, a rabbit might hop along, birds might fly overhead, ants might munch at the ground just past my feet, and I would not move a muscle. In this vision, I would stay absolutely still. I would watch the hibiscus bloom and the tomatoes grow and the basil sprout and the wild thyme climb, and I wouldn't dare touch any of it for the fear of killing it. I would watch life come and go around me, and there would be death there, too, just not by my hand. I would stay still as stone on my still as stone throne, waiting for your return which I would dread a little, for there may be destruction in your wake. But it would still be lovely to have your company. Though it was much less pleasant than it is now, I will say. <laughs> Do not be afraid of your old story, my love. It is past and gone. I tell it now as only a fable. A vision, as I said. Keep your eyes closed. The full moon will be here soon, and it will dispel your fears. But until then, on I will speak. In this extended vision of your old vision from all those lifetimes ago, you were gone a painfully long time, I must say. I had seen so many animals come and go, so many plants sprout and die. The moon came and went over and over and over. The sun, well, it did not quite come. It would peek through gray, cloudy days here and there. And that's it. But the moon was far brighter than those suns in my vision, my love. And with the moon, spirits whispered in my ear, in the darkness. I couldn't make out what they were saying, if I am being honest. Like the tick-tock, 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 tick-tock of that imaginary clock, like the chitter-chatter, chitter-chatter, chitter-chatter of the birds I could not see, like the drip, 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 drip of water that I could not place. It was so noisy there. I thought they were trying to annoy me at first. I thought they were trying to frighten me. I thought they were trying to confuse me. They succeeded. In all three. But when I began to sing again to them, it went quiet once more, and I realized they weren't trying to do anything to me. And it was selfish of me to think so. They wanted me to do something to them, to calm their fears, 
to soothe their hearts, to sing them to sleep. That's what I was queen of to them. In this world of death and fear and violence, they didn't want any more of that. They just wanted peace, too. So sing I did. I would raise my hands up to pass my hands against their faces, to hold their extended hands, but as ghosts my flesh passed right through them, a tragedy but a blessing too, for I could not hurt them. In this world of two dreadful stone thrones belonging to the god of death and his consort. In a vision of a world I rejected so thoroughly, even though I promised I would reject nothing. Life still thrived. Even among the dead. And in the distance, we saw you coming. They trembled with fear, these ghosts, but they did not run, and I did not stop humming. Step by step, inch by inch, until you stopped some distance away and looked at me. Seeing the thrones you promised me all those lifetimes ago when you were greedy and hungry and vicious and a little vile, but still so beautiful, even under all of that. Through the vision, you saw me. You in your vision, me in mine. And as for the ghosts, well, I think they're real. I don't know what vision or reality or either or both they're from, but I think they saw us, too, in that moment. I think that's when you decided to change. Time is such a funny little fable. You showed me your vision so long ago, and I rejected it. And I showed it again to you here, and you rejected it. But together, we've had it now. We've shared it. And aren't we both so glad that it gets to stay there, in the past, while we sit here on this balcony, on this lovely night, looking up at the now full Moon. It's beautiful. The sky is a deep, inky blue. A little green, even. A shade of blue like the ocean more than the sky, I think. I think the sky looks almost green because the moon is the color of a peach. It's an orange pink. The higher it climbs, I know the whiter it will become. But right now, in this instant, it is a rich fruit. 
a growing thing, alive. A bird lands on the balcony. A moth crosses our vision. An ant travels on a stone nearby. A deer looks up at us from below. Vines climb up the crumbling stones. The hibiscus has bloomed. The tomatoes are ripening. The sweet basil sprouting. The wild thyme climbing. And of course, roses grow all around us. Your roses, my love. And you know what? None of these die in our presence anymore. Not since we chased that vision away all that time ago. See? We can embrace life after all. We can honor all of this in its state of change and growth, and yes, even decay and death. And we must honor ourselves, too. These thrones we sit on now They are just stones that have crumbled and stacked themselves up in a somewhat pleasant way. But they are not as stately, not as imposing or as decadent as the ones we had in your dreadful vision. But I wouldn't change them for anything. Breathe. And watch the moon. It's full. It's quiet. And so am I. Once more. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me for episode 280 of On a Dark Cold Night. This is Kristen Zaza, your writer, narrator, host, composer, podcaster, etc. behind the podcast. And I appreciate you being here and tuning into this one with me. I want to say thank you so much to everybody for making last week so special for me. I released my book on a dark, cold night, Tales of Loneliness, Creation, and Love, and everyone was just so kind and supportive. I really appreciate that. If you're interested in checking it out, it's available on Amazon in both paperback and ebook. It features 28 of my favorite stories from the entire podcast, adapted for reading rather than listening, and some original pieces are in there as well to frame them. And it features amazing cover art by UK-based visual artist Newt, who really did some gorgeous work for this. Please do check it out, share the word, buy a copy for a horror fantasy lover in your life. I would so appreciate it. It's on Amazon, again under On a Dark Cold Night, Tales of Loneliness, Creation, and Love. Or you can learn more at kristenzaza.com slash book. Thank you as well to everyone who supports the show on a monthly basis on Patreon. I'm honored as always, my friends. Every supporter of $1 or more US on Patreon gets access to my complete soundtrack, while supporters of $5 or more US get that, a monthly tarot reading video every full moon, the backlog of 70 mini meditation episodes, and my upcoming new perk, my bonus conversations with the new moon episodes. These are starting up next new moon, which will be August 4th, at least in my time. And everyone who subscribes to the Kindred Spirit $5 tier has access to that and 
to the community chat where you can bring up anything you'd like me to discuss in that monthly episode. I'm in there in the chat as well, and I'm looking forward to exploring some topics to discuss in a sleepy, meditative way. Stay tuned for that and learn more at patreon.com slash darkcoldnight. You can also donate one time only without any perks at ko-fi.com slash darkcoldnight, or by buying a t-shirt or hoodie at bonfire.com slash on-a-dark-cold-night. I'd love it if you followed me on Facebook and YouTube under On a Dark Cold Night, Instagram at Dark Cold Night Podcast, TikTok and Blue Sky at Kristen Zaza, or on Twitter at A Dark Cold Night. And reviews and ratings are always wonderful on iTunes, Spotify, Facebook, or anywhere else. Thank you again for listening and joining me this week, my friends. Another little gentle, meditative episode about a past self, a past story, and some difficult fears. But here I am, on my balcony, typing it up, and then again in my closet recording it. And where once everything was noisy in my mind, still I sit here and look at that peach-colored moon, and I breathe. I watch the moon. It's full. It's quiet. And so am I. Sweet dreams, my friends. This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar.